Good evening. Uh, today it's the first event that organized now in Jerusalem. Uh, this is Laza Talks uh, that presented by Laza Talks in silent. And also I will do a small introduction because uh, uh, previously I have to be there with uh, uh, everybody in Jerusalem during the Biennale, Jerusalem Biennale that now is postponed. And uh, because of this, our talk now only online. Uh, but uh, I think this is... Uh, very good if we already start uh, and it will be some first try out how to organize it. So uh, Laser Talks in Jerusalem is uh, uh, the theme of the talk is topology beyond representation using generative 3D modeling algorithms as is a co-author of artistic expression. Uh, also, I would like to tell that this uh, laser talks is organized by Galina Blake. Galina Blake, she is a multidisciplinary artist whose creative experience uh, spans a rich spectrum of artistic domain encompassing digital art uh, concepts, 3D modeling, uh, are, um, augmented reality and virtual reality, bio art. Uh, video art, generative art, NFT art, and more others. At the heart of her artistic pursuit lies a fascination with the profound synergy between the emerging technological reality and its transformative interaction with human experience through the medium art. Uh, also, uh, Galina, she, um, her creative endeavors expand to collaborative projects, notably in a partnership with Elena Terevnikov since 2011. Together, these two artists have created the visionary concept of the simulacra-centric world, a manifestation of their unique creative approach referred to the hybrid neutral network art. Uh, Galina graduated from Stedlitz uh, St. Petersburg State Academy of Art and industry, MI, since 1993, she lives in Jerusalem. Galena takes part in many exhibitions and art conferences all over the world. This uh, laser talks also present and union to, uh, gather together uh, another three uh, speakers. Uh, this is Anna Ameline uh, and Evgeny Ka Eugene Katz. And uh, Daria Kessler, who will be moderator of this talk. A few again words about Daria. She is a co disciplinary researcher and artist, works with the human and machine generated texts, sounds, documentaries, and video art. She is interested in using modern technologies to spread empathy towards all the species through the eyes of machines. Daria wants to explore new ways to co-living between technology, human, plants, and animals. Uh, she has a Master of Science Art, Art of Science, uh, ITMO, St. Petersburg, Russia. She is a Master in Studies in Hybrid, Technological, and Bio-Art, Master of Journalism, St. Petersburg State, Russia, Technological Art, Rochenka Art School, and uh, uh, she has a very extensive and very interesting biography that I um, advise you to see after. After It will be, in all cases, everything uh, published in uh, Leonardo Talks uh, Jerusalem. And uh, uh, I would like not to take more time, just to give a floor to Daria to moderate this fantastic uh, mm -hmm. union between all of us uh, online. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your introduction part. It's really a pleasure to be here today, and I hope we're going to cope with the role of a moderator. So now, now without any further ado, I'll give our virtual floor to Galina Blay. Galina, welcome. We all are waiting for your speech and for your presentation. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm beginning. 
Uh, as it was said, my topic today is topology beyond the presentation using generative 3D modeling algorithms and as a co-author of artistic expression. Uh, and I would like to share my screen now. So for a new media artist using computer 3D modeling tools, especially generative ones, is a complex process that involves both creative and technical aspects. Uh, mathematical algorithms embedded in 3D modeling software allow us to manipulate shapes, textures, lighting, and more, turning abstract scientific uh, or philosophical concepts into tangible representation. Uh, through 3D modeling, an artist can go beyond traditional artistic uh, mediums and translate the invisible into a visual form. This provides um, viewers uh, with an entry point to understand complex or intangible abstract ideas, bridging the gap between the conceptual and perceptible. By creating a metaphoric representation of the unseen and uh, unimaginable, and that it can also evoke an emotional response to abstract scientific ideas. I just agree with those who see AI and computers in general as mere tools for artists. I strongly feel that when I work with a computer, there is a complete unity and partnership. We create things uh, on equal terms. A brush, a chisel, these are still tools, and it's unlikely that uh, anyone would call them co-authors. Uh, but computer programs contain powerful algorithms that often lead to unpredictable scenarios. AI presents me uh, with possible developments and asks, what do you think? I tell it how, uh, and it picks up offering a whole range of possibilities aligning with your stream and thoughts and view. It understands you and you engage uh, in a continuous dialogue endlessly, endlessly. We become centaurs with it, hybrid, and it's an absolutely thrill. Uh, the aspect of media artist creative work uh, is reflected in my art project, Real Mania, the topology of the bagel. It is dedicated to the contemporary mathematician, Grigoris Perelman, and his discoveries in the field of geometric topology, uh, specifically the topology of the torus, the bagel. Uh, the torus is an astonishing geometric figure whose properties can serve as the foundation for a model describing the laws of the universe. Uh, by the way, this picture is uh, created by Midjourney. Um, what specifically intrigued me about Grigory Perelman's brilliant mathemati mathemati mathematical discovery? Uh, in uh, 2003, Perelman published a series of papers presenting a solution to the Pancare conjecture using complex methods from topology, uh, differential geometry, and analysis. The Pancare conjecture, formulated by him in 1904, uh, states uh, that every three dimensional sphere is a spherical manifold, meaning in it can be continuously transformed into a standard three-dimensional sphere without holes or other special uh, structures. Uh, Perelman's proof, while requiring a significant amount of ma mathematical uh, knowledge for full comprehension, demonstrated that the three-dimensional sphere is indeed a spherical manifold. However, Feynman chose not to publish his work in journals and declined awards, uh, awards, believing that mathematics should remain independent of the pursuit of recognition. Uh, nevertheless, his work was reviewed and um, confirmed by numerous other mathematicians. And in uh, 2010, the Clay Institute announced a million dollar reward for proving the Pancare conjecture. Topology is often described as rubber geometry, 
meaning it's the study of geometric shapes properties that don't change when smoothly deformed without breaks or gluing. More precisely, it's about establishing a one-to-one -one and continuous correspondence between two objects. Think uh, of a difference between a sphere and a torus, a donut shape. To formalize this difference, imagine uh, a thin elastic thread uh, like this, uh, hugging, uh, hugging uh, the surface of geometric object, forming a loop. Uh, move the loop without detaching it from the surface of breaking or, or breaking it. If you can shrink the loop down to a very small circle, uh, almost a point, it's called contractible. Otherwise, it's not contractible. Clearly, on a sphere and any loop is contractible. But for a torus, uh, that's not the case. There are two loops. One goes through the hole, uh, through the hole, as you see here, and um, uh, the other goes around the whole perimeter that cannot be contracted. Uh, what sets the sphere apart from all the surfaces depicted here? It's uh, simply connected. On a sphere, any closed curve can be contracted to a point, while on any other surface, uh, you can always find a curve that cannot be contracted along the surface. In mathematics, the dimension of a manifold is the number of degrees of freedom at a point that lives on it. Uh, to me, the dimension, dimension of a manifold as the number of degrees of freedom is a powerful metaphor for the conditions of existence for living systems and life itself. Why did I choose uh, a portrait of Perelman as the image of for Mappy? I am struck for Perelman's personality. He is a person entirely devoted to his life's work, mathematics, and steadfast in rejecting everything external, including prestigious monetary awards and career opportunities. I created all the images in the series using a single portrait of Perelman really available on the internet as public domain. Uh, by wrapping these bagels with texture maps that consist of repeated photos of Grigory Perelman, I created kind, a kind of Perelman's topology. In this topology, the photos themselves can be transformed beyond recognition using mapping algorithms. And now let's see the video explaining one. Uh, so topology in 3D modeling is closely connected to mathematical mapping algorithms and procedural generation, forming a powerful uh, combination. Procedural algorithms allow for algorithmic generation of complex structures based on parameters um, you define. The video uh, demonstrates how these algorithms work within the interface of the 3D modeling program. So here you see the, um, the principle. Uh, we can see that uh, generated by mathematical algorithms, um, the pre presence of Perlman in every point of uh, special geometry leads to the idea of the so-called observer effect. The observer effect is a theory that asserts that uh, simply uh, observing a phenomenon uh, inevitably changes it. Uh, just like in the realm of um, quantum physics, uh, where the act of observation alters practical behavior, the perceptation and understanding of the outstanding scientists have a transformative impact on the fabric of reality itself. Uh, topological mathematics deals uh, with studying properties that remain unchanged during continuous deformations, such as stretching or bending without breaks or gluing. It's the discipline deeply concerned with the inner nature of shapes and space. 
When applied to the observer effect, the mathematician ideas go beyond the surface appearance of reality, revealing the fundamental laws and connections that define it. Uh, the presence of the scientist uh, as an observer allows us to perceive the complex structure of reality, often hidden from ordinary perception. As scientists delve deeper into the mathematical nature of space, the understanding of relationships between seemingly unreal uh, elements expands affecting how reality manifests itself. Uh, the observer imbues reality with uh, adaptability, responding to their ideas. This means that the observer can uh, subtly alter the world around them, receiving and comprehending hidden connections between objects, events, and phenomena. Uh, let's see the short video. Topology often deals with bridging gaps between individual components. Similarly, the observer acts as a bridge between an abstract world of mathematics and the tangible world of experience. Uh, the observer's experience in topology promotes a holistic approach where they see reality as a unified, connected whole rather than fragmented parts. Uh, the comprehensive per uh, perspective brings balance and harmony to the surrounding environment, harmonizing uh, disparate elements into the symphony of existence. The insight of the um, observer reveals hidden potential of reality. In this uh, reinterpretation, the observer effect goes beyond particles and energy, uh, intervening perception, mathematics, and reality. Uh, the presence of this brilliant scientist eliminates the profound relationship between uh, observation and transformation, bridging the conceptual gap between the observer and the absorbed and demonstrating that knowledge and understanding can indeed shape the world around us. Uh, my interest in the field of mathematics that Perelman pursued is not accidental. As an artist working in digital art, particularly in 3D modeling, modeling I interact uh, with the topology of objects uh, as it determines their visual characteristics. Therefore, I consider uh, modern computer reality as my collaborator, and the art we create together is hybrid, born from the partnership of humans and computers. And now let's see some example, uh, examples of our collaboration. Uh, now, the theory of Perelmania, the topology of the bagel, interface of infinity, develops these ideas. The Tori, connected together, form a three-dimensional uh, geometric figure in the shape of an eight, which represents the unified symbol, uh, uh, infinity symbol. And... Um, uh, the torus has several uh, intersecting features related to the concept of symmetry. You can rotate it around the, its center, uh, and uh, it will still look the same. Uh, this is called rotational symmetry. You can also glide in infinitely uh, along its surface. This allows the stretch and repeating mapping onto its topology. You can create a torus by rotating a circle on, in three-dimensional space. Regardless of how you position the torus in space, it returns uh, its uh, symmetry and topology. Imagine drawing a line uh, through the middle of the torus. Uh, 
the two sides of uh, on uh, either side of this line are like mirror reflection of, of each other. Uh, these, uh, this is a type of reflective symmetry specific to the torus. Through the axis, uh, we can uh, draw an arbitrary plan which intersects uh, our full torus with two orange circles, uh, you see, uh, and the additional part of the plan is divided onto a continuous family of white circles. This way, we obtain a figure representing infinity. Uh, in my series, Interface on Infinity, the face is the face of the outstanding mathematician Grigory Perelman, who made a significant contribution to the geometric analysis of this figure. As mentioned earlier, I used repeated photos of uh, Perelman as mapping, covering the surface of three-dimensional infinity sign. In my project, the mathematician himself and his discoveries merge together, becoming a symbol of infinite uh, multidimensionality of the world. In the quest uh, to understand this multidimensionality, uh, exceptional individual genius become guides to all uh, of humanity. In conclusion, um, it's worth um, uh, noting that Perlman's reasoning proves not only Poincaré conjecture, but also a much broader Thurston's uh, geometrization con conjecture, which describes the structure of all com compact three-dimensional manifolds. Uh, however, this topic goes beyond the scope of our current discussion. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, Galen. It was really interesting to listen to you. Thank you for sharing your okay. ideas and your unique vision. So I think now it's time to share our virtual stage with Dr. Anna Yemelin. Anna specialized in researching in media art and hybrid forms of culture that intersect art, science, and technology. She explores virtual reality, inter interactive art, digital media, and artificial intelligence. In her academic work, she analyzed current artistic practices that use modern media, scientific developments, and technology, as well as the ways contemporary art adapts to the changing technological landscape. In 2015, Anna obtained her first doctorate from the University of Ivanova in Russia. Her dissertation focused on the interaction of the different languages of knowledge and society and the formation of their hybrid forms. In 2023, she is completing her doctoral studies at Baron University in Israel. Her research centers around the science art project at Galina Blake and Yelena Sivrikova, the theme of the recreating the human and their artworks and in new media art in general, as well as the reality and similar relationship in digital and physical spaces. Anna, we're really glad to have you here today, and please. Hello, everyone. I'm very glad to be here today. Today, I will talk about the digital space in the experience of the viewer. Numerous works of digital art, including, of course, the artworks of Galina Blake, prompt reflections of the nature of space. The digital world operates by its own laws, that are different from the physical space. In classical art, space is confined by the dimensions of the canvases and the other physical surfaces. In digital art, artists can manipulate three-dimensional models and virtual spaces, exploring more complex spatial concepts. It's within digital art that visualization and Im Im imaginary coexist with mathematical formalization and logical structure. One of the beautiful examples of uh, artistic concept connected with mathematical concepts is, of course, Peredmania by Galina Blake. And here I wanted to show you one more example by the artist Saliman. Uh, this project is called Riemann Spheres Between Mathematics and Art. And this project is an NFT collection uh, consisting of so-called Riemann Spheres 
embodied by the artist in digital sphere. The theme of the topology of digital space is explored in contemporary digital art using various approaches and techniques. Artists research abstract forms, structures, and virtual worlds that might process non-traditional topological characteristics, such as non-inclusial ge geometric spheres, mobile strips, infinite loops, and strange attractions. One particular aspect of artists' work with non-traditional topologies is that complex spatial concepts may no longer be fully comprehended by the artist during his creative process, unlike what figures like Maurice Escher did. Here we see Escher's famous drawing creatively portraying the complex spatial concept, the Mervous Strip. Uh, Escher's works explore non-Euclidean geometry. And here, for example, is um, the video game, a Monument Valley, Valley uh, that created visually studying world with dig digital non-traditional geometry and topology, allowing players to interact with the surrounding environment by altering its shape. And undoubtedly, uh, it is seen that the creators of this computer game were inspired by Escher's works, essentially transported his artworks into the digital realm. Uh, contemporary digital artists can use the capabilities of graphic programs using algorithms to fulfill their artistic goals. Generative art employs algorithmic methods, uh, can generate works where geometry is shaped and transformed based on specific rules or random process. I return to this picture because the particularity of all these images that you see right now before you is that they are not created by the artists but by the regular users. That's why digital artists now have another task. There are numerous uh, special programs um, and tools for creating, uh, for working with geometry and in digital art. Artists themselves do not develop software for creating digital artworks. They use all ready-made tools within the digital environment. The digital medium serves uh, to the artist as the workspace, as a tool, and also as the co-author. The depiction of complex topologies ceases to be primary creative task because the digital foundation of the programs in which artists create already assumes the visualizations of these topologies. Therefore, the important task for the contemporary artist working with new media is to create a dialogue between digital environment and the viewer. This is to ensure that viewer doesn't merely observe the digital space and attempt to understand how artists realized it, uh, some non-standard topologies, but interacts with the artwork to comprehend the possibilities of these non-standard topologies in the digital space during the interaction. The interaction of the viewer with such types of artworks simulates the viewer's reflection on the structure of the space. Galina Blech and Yelena Serebrikova's project Reincarnation Zero, which is part of their huge extensive new media project called the Simulacrocentric World, invites the viewers to the Simulacrocentric World, uh, constructed as three-dimensional interface. In this space, any object can be centered and can coordinate system as the center of the world. Uh, the video clip simulates the interactive journey through the space defined, the artist, defined by the artists. The viewer or the user can select any object and entire space of the simulacrocentric world rotates around it. This project demonstrates that unlike anthropocentric physical world uh, with its standard perception of space, among the simulacra populating the world, the virtual world, there is no spatial hierarchy. Anyone or anything can be the center or not be center at all. This is how it works. In general, artists working with new media often enable the viewer to feel like the creator of the artwork, since the viewer influences the final result of the creative process. 
Among artworks of this kind, many allow the viewer to change their perceptions of space and to meet the possibilities of spatial representation in the digital world. One of the concepts characterizing our perception of space is perspective. It characterizes our sight of the world. Uh, as an interesting example, I'll mention uh, Thomas Walitsky's installation, The Way. The viewer approaches the projection screen located in the end of a long corridor, and the image on the screen tr transforms depending on the viewer's movements. In this project, the viewer meets the possibilities of perspective in digital space, which unlike the, ph the physical world can change. As the viewer approaches the artwork, the world with it, within it compresses, creating a natural perspective effect, but in reverse. The unusual perception of space in this artwork is linked to the fact that the closer you get to an object, the smaller it becomes, while more distant objects appear larger. The world is changing. Many spheres of our life are moving into the digital realm. Humans represented by their virtual avatars are also transitioning into the digital world. However, it doesn't mean they can fully interact with this new world because the physical body cannot yet be left behind. In Galina Blech and Yelena Serebrikova's artworks Gravity, the viewer needs to interact with a character that resides in the digital environment. Uh, this character you see on your screen is Miki. She's the protagonist of the simulacra-centric world. Uh, the viewer sees uh, the video with Miki. Electronic scales are placed on the floor in front of the screen. In this project, Miki explores the category of weight. A special sensor transmits the presence of the person and the value of his weight into a computer program, which processes this information according to a preset algorithm. The image on the screen changes during the processing the information by artificial intelligence. The simulacrum's interpretation of the received information is reflected in its behavior. It reacts to the weight parm parameters by deforming along the vertical y-axis. Its interpretation of the concept of weight has nothing to do with literal physical characteristics. It depends on the, um, it depends on the algorithm set in the program and principle of position bodies in the digital three-dimension space, limited by the characteristic of two-dimensional display. The simulacrum interprets the weight of the human body as a force causing deformation along the vertical y-axis. Initially, the goal of this artwork was not to talk about the digital space, but to demonstrate the perception of physical category in the, in the virtual space. However, the resulting outcome splendidly illustrates the possibilities of digital space compared to the physical, providing the view with an experience of these differences. In her project Perelmania, Galina Blake explores the possibility of representing complex mathematical concepts and physical dimensions. And here is the project of Marnix Denias. And in his work, The Last Dimension, he represents what it might be like to see the world without dimensions at all, and, re and realizes this in digital space. This is how he sees it, how he sees it the world without dimensions. Art, like any other practice, involves and continues to develop as artists and technologists expand the boundaries of the known and the possible. 
explorations into new possibilities for artistic development increasingly becoming interdisciplinary, unit in science, technology, and design. And all of this we have seen now. Thank you. Anna, thank you so much uh, for your speech and for your presentation and for sharing your emotions. <laughs> Uh, and now um, I would like to introduce our third speaker, uh, Dr. Eugene Katz, uh, is a professor at the Ben Gurion University of the Negev. He received his master degree in 1982 in semiconductor material science and PhD in 1990 in solid state physics from the National University of Science and Technology in Moscow, Russia. His research interests include studies and development of new materials and devices for solar energy and conversion into electricity, as well as a history of science connection between science and art. He has published 135 peer-reviewed papers on these topics, as well as a popular scientific book and a number of articles in science history and purine like structures in nanomaterials, living organism and architecture, based on the layer activity he has developed and is teaching in interdisciplinary curves, bridges between fine art and natural science, causes of fluorescence polyhedra symmetry. Professor Kass was awarded the medal by the International Association of Advanced Materials for outstanding research in the field of new energy materials and technology. Professor, um, really happy to give the floor to you thank you thank, thank you very much <clears throat> daria for this kind introduction let me open my presentation first of all i would like to thank galia for this uh, brave invitation me because i am not an artist i am even not a uh, art historian and even i'm not a mathematician i am solid state physicist working on the new materials for um, solar energy conversion to conversion sunlight in into electricity uh, but uh, we you understand what is common between Gala's talk and my talk and I, I i thought about title and i suggest sphere versus torus like space structures from material science to topology yes and i am indeed uh, working in Gurion university of the Negev, and in the campus, you can see the campus in the Debaker, yeah, in the middle of nowhere or in the middle of the desert Negev. And you see also two icons I put in, in this slide. One is a Leonardo by Leonardo and another one by Durer. And Leonardo depicts a molecule which calls molecule <clears throat> uh, fuller in molecules. So Daria, uh, bravo, you, you name it correctly. Uh, yes, and uh, we, I will talk about this discovery. And uh, there are two, uh, there are two uh, arrows in opposite uh, directions. Uh, what does it mean that uh, to sun and from sun, uh, that we want to use these molecules to produce solar cells, to convert sunlight to electricity, and at the same time, oppositely, we use the sunlight to generate this material, yes? So uh, for many, many, many years, we all know only two modification, crystalline modification of, of, of poor carbon, and you also know them, especially the second one. The first is graphite and the second is diamond. They all contains only of carbon atom, but in different crystallographic uh, configuration. But in 1985, it was a discovery of the molecule which is called uh, Buckminster fullerene and or carbon-60. It's a molecule which in the form of, uh, of uh, polyhedron, which mathematicians call truncated oikosahedron. You all know the shape because it's a shape of a soccer ball, yes, with uh, pentagons and hexagons. Or, for example, look on this model, yeah? And, uh, yes, let me switch the slide. Uh, it, already this was connection between science and art. Why? Because uh, it's, it's, it's named after a famous American uh, uh, architect, Bankminster Fuller, who suggested to build uh, buildings or spheres or geodesic spheres, so-called, in, in this shape, yes? And uh, three discoveries got the Nobel Prize uh, for, 
for this discovery. The discovery was in 1985 and the Nobel Prize 1996. Unfortunately, all of them already died. Uh, one, one, the second and the third of three uh, died last year. I met with two of them and uh, listened and discussed and even have uh, one of them uh, wrote a letter of support for me when I wanted to get a position, permanent position in the Ben Gurion University. But what is important for us is that this is a polyhedron which consists only from hexagons and pentagonal spheres, yes? And at the same time, it's, it's like a sphere, yes? It's a spherical spherical molecule or polyhedron. And topologically, it is the same. I will explain what does it mean. And uh, this is uh, this uh, uh, this polyhedron is uh, uh, is uh, one of the big family which we call Archimedean polyhedra or Archimedean solid because because of Archimedes. Uh, people believe that Archimedes wrote something about them. Nobody saw this manuscript. And in in Europe, all of them were rediscovered in the Renaissance time by great mathematician of the time. Most of them were also great, uh, great uh, uh, artists, like, first of all, Piero Francesca, Leonardo was involved, and Albrecht Dürer, and some others. Yes, uh, my, uh, my polyhedron is number four on this, this uh, uh, soccer ball. Yes, truncated icosahedron. Uh, because we all now on the umbrella of Leonardo, yes, I will show you Leonardo's drawing. Uh, actually, he not only draw this, a lot of polyhedra, he also invented a way how to draw it. Today we call it uh, a method of solid segments because it was not simple to represent in 3D, uh, this on 2D, 3D structures, yes? 3D polyhedra. Yes, and uh, now we jump to middle of 18th century uh, to the work of uh, Leonard Euler, the great uh, mathematician, one of the greatest in all countries and all times, uh, who was born in Basel, but he spent his life in two cities, 50-50, one is uh, St. Petersburg and another Berlin. And uh, in the middle of century, 18th century, he suggested this formula or Euler theorem, which is uh, said that for any convex polyhedra, this polyhedra is convex, yes? Uh, number of faces minus number of edges plus number of vertices must be equal to two. And this was the birth of uh, today, Gala and also uh, the second speaker use a lot the term topology. What is topology? This is the, this is the first theorem of topology. Uh, this day of publishing this theorem was a birth of mathematical topology. And uh, today uh, we know that for different subjects, uh, uh, the two may be changes. For example, so-called general oil theorem, we write it now, F minus E plus V equal to N. And N we call Euler parameter or Euler characteristics. And for example, for torus, it's completely different. It will be zero. Why it is zero? Because, let me let me change something. Because N should be two minus two G, with G is number of holes. I already say that this is the first theorem of topology, but I didn't make a definition. Let's do it. Uh, topology is a part of mathematics that is concerned with the properties of geometrical objects that are preserved under continuous deformation. And uh, Gala mentioned it, yes? If you look on the left on the polyhedron and on the right on the, on the sphere or even on the core, they are the same from the point of view of topology, yeah? Because their form is preserved under continuous deformation, yes? But if you think about torus, it's impossible. It's already completely different mathematics, different physics. It will be different universe, yes? So torus is a relative, for example, of this cup. And this is, uh, I think, uh, a joke by another artist, Henry Segerman. He showed that it's a topological joke, topological transformation from the cup to torus, yes? 
But uh, what is the connection to the Fullerian uh, science? <clears throat> it's very beautiful. And uh, ah, I didn't say, I told you about that molecule carbon 60, but Mr. Fullerian was discovered. But today we know an entire family of these molecules, which called Fullerians. And they are, the definition is they are closed cage molecules of poor carbon in the shape of polyhedra with onal, pentagonal, and hexagonal faces. Like here, yeah? You see the hexagonal, six, and pentagonal, yes? And uh, using the order theorem, we can construct the entire family. Uh, it will be even not mathematics, let's say very simple arithmetics, but you can do it by yourself or maybe trust me. So number of faces for fullerens, because it's only pentagonal and hexagonal faces, should be equal to P plus H, where P is number of pentagons and H is number of hexagons, yes? Uh, because uh, two, uh, one H connects to two faces, uh, double number of H's will be 5P plus 6H, and because uh, three vertices, three ages come to one vertice, by the same reason, triple number of vertices will be 5P plus 6H, and simple arithmetics, if we do it, we will get that 6F minus E plus V will be equal to P, and X, H disappear. And because of Euler theorem, it means that for any such structures, P is equal to 12. What does it mean? It means that for any molecules or any buildings or any living organisms, viruses, for example, now this COVID virus, or all of them has these this similar structures. If you have only hexagonal and pentagonal faces, the number of pentagons should be equal to 12. This is if the structure is the universe organized like a sphere. And this is very interesting because there is no physics behind it, no chemistry, just Euler theorem, just topology. And then we can reconstruct what is the entire family, the minimum, uh, the minimum uh, fullerene will be carbon 20, uh, where only 12 pentagons exist. And then you can increase number of hexagons and get entire family, yes? But uh, rem rem remember that if we talk about uh, if we talk about torus, then n will be not equal to two, it will be equal to zero, yes? And it will be completely different mathematics, completely different organization of this structure. And we, we have torus in nanotorus in, uh, in these carbon molecules or carbon clusters and some other structures. And uh, already the other request uh, 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 heptagons or can be organized only by hexagons. Why? Because the Euler characteristic, Euler theorem is different. And in topology, it means that it's completely different, different, uh, everything is different. <laughs> yes, I'm almost finished, but at the very end, I would like to, to mention that Gala was not the very first uh, artist who thought and meditate and study mathematically uh, uh, torus, uh, polyhedral torus in, uh, in, uh, in Italian is Mazzocchio, yeah? And I first mentioned Paolo Uccello. I, I mentioned Durer and Leonardo and Pierre da Francesca, but one of the greatest mathematicians between them was Paolo Uccello, who introduced a great deal to theory <clears throat> of perspective, yes? And this is his drawing on, uh, on, uh, uh, polyhedral theory, Matsokeo, and you see also some uh, Leonardo uh, Matsokeo, yes? But he also put it, uh, he means, uh, uh, means Uccello, in his great, well, great uh, frescoes and, and, uh, and paintings. Uh, this is in Santa Maria Novella in Florence, and you can see uh, the, the, it was very popular hat in the Renaissance time for both men and, 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 and women uh, in, in, a, in a shape of Mazzocchio. And you can see it in these frescoes from Santa Maria Novella and also from his Battle of San Romano. These uh, paintings are in three versions. One in, 
in uh, in Uffizi, another one in Lur, and the third I don't remember where, but there are three. But you see that in this battle, you see these guys with this uh, with this uh, Matsokyo. And to the very, very end, I almost finished, a beautiful, beautiful uh, Matsokyo, and also by, uh, my, my, my molecular structures uh, in, in Tarsia by another giant of Renaissance art, Fra Giovanni di Verona. And uh, if we jump to, to Palazzo Ducale in Urbina, it's not Fra Giovanni di Verona, in other artist, uh, there is a famous studiola, and you see again the beautiful, beautiful torus. Yes, and uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Professor. Thank you for not leaving us in the deep waters of topology and giving us some additional and very interesting information that help us to understand deeper Galina's work. Thank you so much. So now, if uh, I think the time to go and uh, read loud some questions. So I would like to start with the first one. Anna highlighted the exploration of a special concept in digital art. How do you think the new understanding of space might influence the way we perceive physical spaces or virtual environments in the future? And I would like to ask Anna to be the first one to answer this question because I think we all um, so how she, how emotional she was while uh, sharing with, with us one of the videos yeah, uh, about Galina's work. So Anna, please share your ideas uh, about these new dimensions and how all that, um, how art and science is changing our perception of the reality. Please, we would like to hear. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I wanted to tell that you asked, um, may it influence and I'm sure that it can, and this is my position, I'm standing with, um, first of all, there are many mathematical concepts and ideas that can only be uh, visually represented in the digital sphere. And I think that it will develop um, uh, both mathematics and uh, new media art. And also, I think that such spheres as computer games, VR and AR environments, um, new media art um, represented by digital art and interactive art uh, also have the great role in this process and will influence further. And maybe Galina will share with us some of her ideas as an artist about uh, the new ways of influence, how we can use the new specials, the new dimensions to influence both the work of the artist and the perception of a viewer. Um, I want to say that computer modeling on the one hand reflects the picture uh, of our physical world. Uh, on the other hand, it allows us to remove the elimination of the material. Uh, material world. This expands our boundaries uh, of our ideas and allows us to visualize uh, the unrepresentable. For example, for dimensional space, as I tried to do with my other theories of works. Thank you. So, um... Let's go to the next question. Um, it refers to um, Galina. Uh, she said that computer is her collaborator. And there is a question. Uh, what do you think? Is it true that now technologies are not just a two and they've become a real co-after and collaborator? I think um, it will be fair if Galina will answer this question. Okay, in connection of your question, I want to note uh, that I heard the story about some uh, new technology. I want to tell you about the late, latest research in the field uh, of interaction between living organisms and computers. Scientists today are uh, growing um, so-called uh, mini-brains 
from human biomaterial and connecting them to AI. It is very interesting. That is <laughs> exciting, really. Uh, the mini brain learns faster than the AI, and the AI processes information faster than the human. Uh, I think such uh, symbiosis, such hybrid interaction is a prototype of uh, the future relationship between man and the new technological reality. Thank you. And Professor Kotz, could you please uh, share with us your point of view? As you are working with a computer and with new technologies, but less as an artist, more as a scientific. Um, what do you think about it? Is it computer, is it technologies your collaborators or they steal your tools? It's better if it's not enemy, yeah? <laughs> No, but uh, when, when Galia says that she a computer is her collaborator, this is a different story. Of course, computer can be a collaborator of of of, uh, of uh, scientist, but uh, yeah, that's for sure. Many things, seventy percent of modern science could not be done without a computerization. This is not big deal. Uh, the interesting question: if an artist can be a collaborator of of uh, of a scientist, and I, I thought about it because for all kind what we show today by Gala for visualization for computer games, it's no question. But can it be some something new in science itself? Uh, I thought about it, and uh, because I, I, I tried to thought about these questions, and uh, I, I I think the brilliant example of it is. Uh, Anna show the Escher works, yes? And Escher, this is a, indeed an example of it. Escher was recognized by scientists. He was not very respected by, you know, he was artist, yes? But we scientists <laughs> uh, found him. And we, the first uh, big exhibition was done in Crystallographic Congress in Amsterdam. And then he started to collaborate with, uh, with crystallographers. And but his was really very a lot of ideas is a fountain of ideas. Even if you can see the slides for for Anna, you you can see Escher and nobody else. Yes, and he started to collaborate with Pinrose. Pinrose wrote to him a letter, and then it comes to the very strong influence on on the theory of quasi crystals, uh, crystals with five fold symmetry. Yes, and this is this is an interesting. Uh, on the other hand, what I why I involved in so called let's say connection between art and science, mostly because of, of education. That today the it's two kind of cultures. Yes, uh, people from science and people from art cannot uh, understand each other. It's a very very few guys like uh, or women like Galina wants to do it some connections and this i would like to do this why I, I i make a course and teach this course already so the in, in our university yeah it's thank you for your answer and okay so it was our third question and i also would like to ask anna to answer it from your point of view um do you think uh that uh, art and science collaboration contribute to public understanding and appreciation both of both disciplines and of art and of science. Just maybe your personal experience. Um, art deals with the sensory side of life, emotions and metaphor. Uh, science deals more with abstract ideas. Uh, so both of these aspects enrich and shape consciousness, I think. Um, I'm confident that the future lies in a more harmonious relationship between these two aspects. That's my answer. Thank you, Galina. And now, Anna, please. <laughs> Maybe you have something to add. Um, yes, um, I wanted to say that I really believe that new media art 
uh, which connects science and art and represents sometimes very brave and unique approaches to the use of technology in art is the best example of uh, art and science collaboration because uh, this kind of art only exists for the viewer, for the person, and it makes sense only with the contact um, with the viewer and often um, in, direct, in direct communication with him. And uh, this is why it exists to create the new hybrid uh, form of communication and um, knowledge. And do you think that for this new form of communication, uh, a new language is needed? Um, I think that new media art is the new language uh, by itself. And do you think that it have um, what are like uh, the main features of this language? Oh, the, the railroad. Um, first of all, um, um, uh, we can uh, look at your previous uh, question about um, uh, uh, is uh, the technology the co-author of the artist or no? And this is one of the main features, uh, I think, uh, because uh, there are many approaches and I stand with this that says that yes, technology is the co-author. And uh, this is one of uh, the features of this new language. Um, also, um, the uh, technology is the environment and both both the environment and the tool uh, for the artist. And this is the two other features, I think. Um, maybe Galina can say something because she's an artist. <laughs> It, uh, it was said by me that I feel that centaurs, uh, when I work with technologies, uh, that means that uh, I um, grow my energy, my possibilities, my abilities to express myself, my thoughts, and uh, the whole vision of the world, my vision of the world, exactly. So, thank you. I think that uh, our today's meeting definitely uh, will inspire our viewers and people who will see this um, recording in the future and will expand their vision and maybe inspire them and give them a new perspective to see the art, to see the science, to see the technology and to probably deeply understand math and dimensions of world around us. Uh, I would like to thank you, Alessandra Dementiva, for having us today and for giving us opportunity to discuss such important and interesting and also fascinating topics. Uh, it was a great um, pleasure to be here today and also I would like to say thank you for Anna France and her team um, for uh, supporting this meeting today. Um, and for the last word, I will give the floor to Galina. And uh, um, first of all, um, I feel uh, myself in a very good company today. <laughs> After all your speech, <laughs> in a great company of outstanding scientists and artists <laughs> of the whole history of humanity. And um, I want to thank also um, Alexandra Dementiva, the uh, chairwoman of Laser Talks Brussels, and her uh, Adam Lab, and um, of course Anna Franz again, uh, that uh, supported our meeting today and her brilliant team. And I'm happy to be a part of your brilliant professional community. Thank you very much. And I hope that I hope that um, we can continue our meetings uh, in uh, Laser Talks uh, Jerusalem in the future. And um, thank you very much for all uh, and for your attention. I would like just to join because it was very interesting to listen to you all. And this is uh, some kinds of the subject and topic that I think it's uh, will be continued to discuss in uh, art and uh, 
science community because it's still developing and still continue. And uh, thank you very much for this uh, involvement in this field uh, that uh, we are trying to do much more uh, open for uh, like when I am just general public, because I think it's very important that uh, it will be some kinds of the collaboration that make things uh, easier to understand and at the same time visually uh, interesting. Thank you very much for participating. <laughs> and I hope to see you very soon. Already you're independent laser talk. <laughs>